Okay, I'm over here behind the haul truck and as you can see, um, the axle is gone out from underneath it. What I've done is uh, I've got the forklift truck out there. I hope this uh, re I'm kind of showing you the sleeper because um, what I'm gonna be doing is pulling it out of here and putting it up on the lift so that I can see the underside of it. Welcome to part 56 of the haul truck series. Um, this episode, I'm gonna be working on the back of the truck, uh, the air suspension. I've got the air suspension as you've seen behind the truck and um, we're gonna be running, uh, uh, working on that. There is uh, a little hiccup or a complication that I'm gonna be running into at the end of this, uh, this chapter but uh, maybe you guys can throw some input into it too. I kind of know how I'm gonna work it out, but uh, maybe hearing from you guys will be helpful too. So welcome to part 56, all truck series. Uh, got the forklift truck out there. What I did is brought the air suspension system back here, pulled the axle out. And uh, what I'm gonna do is start test fitting it into here. Now, there's a couple of issues that I have. Well, they're not really issues. When I took this apart, um, you'll see that this this pin and this bolt is still through there. I'm not really sure what that is. I, I have a feeling that that was a bracket for a fender mount, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm going to say a fender mount. I, it's not a mud flat because it uh, was on the front set of... Uh, um, front side of the uh, rears in the do are on the semi so it wasn't a mud flap it was probably a fender bracket uh, the same is on the other side I'm just not sure they don't seem to want to come out of there I'm not sure if they're screwed into that bracket or if it, they're just rusted in place but I've got to get them out there's some other work that I've got to do on this and then what I'm going to do is test fit it up onto the uh, up onto the frame so that I can mark my holes. I've got the mag drill back. Um, uh, there was going to be a couple of purposes for it, but um, I was going to add some uh, running lights to the trailer, but um, I, I might just do that at some other time. What I, I, he needs a mag drill back is, is what I'm trying to tell you is I've only got that mag drill for probably a couple of days. So what I want to do is get this thing test fitted, get it up in there, get these holes drilled, get that plate fabricated that's going to go in the back side of it um, so that I can get the holes through both the plates and then um, um, go from there. But anyways, I'll bring you back. Okay, so I'm back here and I got those things off. Um, this side, I had to heat um, a pretty a lot of heat, sprayed uh, PB Blaster on it, and uh, finally got it to break free. Um, I had pounded on the end, turned it with a wrench, and uh, actually had to use a cutting torch to um, get it off. Now this side, I just pounded on it with my big hammer, um, 48 ounce hammer. Pounded on it and and got it to spin it. I had a two foot pipe wrench, uh, two foot steel pipe wrench on it and uh, was putting pressure on it as I pounded and it broke free and I was able to get it out without heating this side. Um, in case you're wondering, heating the sides doesn't make any difference. It's a cast iron. I was just heating the cast iron, so it really doesn't affect the integrity of the cast iron. Um, just heating it up so that I could uh, get it to break free. Bring you back. Okay, I moved back over here to the truck. Uh, next day after I showed you bringing this stuff over here, what I have subsequently done is you'll see the two tape measures there. 
Originally, I had a line on the floor, and I don't know whether you're going to be able to see it or not, but let me see if I can identify it for you. you the end of my pen is that line, and that line goes across. What I did yesterday was took those two tape measures, one on each side, and pulled them out to, from the front axle. <clears throat> and I'll explain this in a minute. I pulled them up from the front axle to make sure that that line was still <clears throat> parallel with the front axle, and it is. Uh, that line is at exactly 15 feet off of the front of the front axle. So, in other words, I, I came and I took the tape measure and I put it hooked it onto the front of the front axle. No, I hooked it on there and I clamped it with one of them little spring clamps. And I did the same thing on both sides at the same place on both sides. And then pulled it back and took a, a square um, and put the square, the edge of the square on that line and, and pulled the tape out and made sure that it was uh, even and it was even I must have set that line at 15 feet and it still is at 15 feet so what I have just done took a plumb bob and dropped it down to that line and put a mark on both sides where that line is now that line isn't going to represent anything per se it's just a line that I'm going to use as a square line off of it so that I know wherever I end up putting that bracket, these brackets, I will measure off of that line to make sure that both brackets are in line with this line, which is actually in line with the front axle. So the reason I did that is... The front axle is the 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 steering axle, but I, I want the front axle and the rear axle to be parallel with each other, exactly parallel with each other, so it doesn't track. And I don't want to take measurements off of the frame because I don't know if the frame is true and square. It would just be too hard to figure out if the the frame is accurate all of the way. Uh, I mean, it could be done. I, I could do the same thing that I just did with a plumb bob and make sure that that front axle is the same, in the same exact position as it uh, from the front of the frame on both sides. But I didn't want to do that. All I want to do is just make sure that the two axles are, are parallel with each other. Um, and, and the frame is what it is. Um, it is pretty close. I mean, if you take that mark, and right there is a mark. It's probably hard to see now. A Sharpie, a blue Sharpie mark right there. And it falls the same on about in the same position on both sides but I mean I could measure it and um, but it doesn't really matter my my main concern is keeping it parallel with the front line or front um, axle so what I'm gonna do take a square put a scribe mark down through there May, maybe not a scribe mark per se but a sharpie mark down through there so that I have a reference point that I can go off of so that I know that both brackets are positioned the exact same on both sides of the uh, on both frame rails uh, driver side passenger side right left um, so that they are positioned and I know that when I put the brackets on they're going to be in the same parallel plane as the front axle but anyways, I just wanted to explain that to you.
So I'm over here to the welding bench, and these are those two frame rails that I took that air suspension off of. Now, these rails up here, I think maybe in a previous video, is I identified them as the fifth wheel slide rails, but they're not really a slide rail. The fifth wheel doesn't slide on this. It slides above it. These holes in here are for the pin. So if you want to adjust the fifth wheel back and forth, it gets pinned into the slot wherever you want to adjust it to. So I'm thinking, you know, I told you that I might be putting them onto the truck. And I was thinking, well, I'm probably going to have to notch, um, notch the, uh, the part that bolts to the frame to get around that bracket, um, that, that front bracket that holds the air suspension. But let me, uh, I just noticed something. I was uh, in the process of uh, laying out the parallel line for off of the front axle on the back frame and getting ready to lift that uh, suspension up to kind of test fit it into the frame. And I just noticed something. And let me shut you off and I'll take you back there and show you what I noticed. So I'm looking at these brackets and I, I noticed something. I, I noticed that these two are on the same plane, but this one is set back. Well, you know why it's set back? It's set back to adapt to that pin rail for the fifth wheel. Um, so what I've got to do is just kind of set these, uh, figure out how far that rail sticks down, and, and set it so that that can be bolted around that thing. But anyways, that's kind of cool. I, I, I actually never even noticed that. Um, up until, like I said, when I was getting ready to lift this thing up to test fit it, I noticed why the hell is the upper two holes recessed back and then I'm thinking oh I know exactly why because I was thinking I had to cut that rail to adapt to around this bracket um, Wow I'll bring you back okay so I'm back over here to the back of the truck and I have the front brackets for the air suspension mounted onto the truck now I haven't put the plate behind it that I had talked about before. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm actually even going to do it at this point in time. Um, you know, when I I've got the mag drill down there, and I, when I mag drilled through there, I had kind of forgotten how thick that frame was, um, and I'm pretty confident that. Uh, that thing will be holding up uh, just fine. Um, that's one of the divots out of the uh, holes that I cut with the. And here we go with this camera. That's one of the divots that I uh, cut out. So um, we're talking probably three eighths of an inch thick there um, of frame six bolts on each bracket, three-eighths of an inch frame rail, nine inches uh, high. So I, I'm, I'm kind of confident. I'm not saying that I'm not going to put it in there. I'm just saying that at this point in time, I haven't put it in yet. Um, again, this was, uh, I did this yesterday. I didn't film any of it uh, drilling the holes or anything. And as in previous clips I had talked about, I measured off of the, the line that I had uh, established that's parallel with the um, front axle to it. But anyways, it's in here. So what I've got to do now is uh, move the axle back in here and, and start establishing where it's going to be. Um, One of the things that I'm kind of unsure of, um, and 
I've got to, we, we know that I've got to establish a pan hard bar on this thing someplace. Um, whether it be a stock pan hard bar or something that uh, is fabricated by me is yet to be determined. But one of the other things that I need to do is we have these, let's call them stabilizer bars that come uh, from the bracket back to the front of the axle bracket. <clears throat> and they would stabilize the axle from shifting back and forth, but one of the things that I noticed is they're not adjustable in any way unless you shimmed um, that and maybe that's why the bolts are that long on it you could probably shim it if you needed to um, shim one side or both sides depending on different thickness shims but let me take a look at that and see if that's the way that I want to go. Um, the other thing that I've got to do is the original frame that this suspension came off of was a same size frame all the way back where this thing tapers down. So with that get being said that the original frame the, the mounting brackets for the airbags were on a lower beam uh, because it didn't taper on the original one. So one of the things I have to do is establish whether I've got to make some kind of a bracket to get the upper part of the airbag down a little farther um, like it was similar to the original frame rail that it came off of. But I will bring you back as I, um, as I do all of that stuff. Again, here it is. I got it in. I haven't, uh, I, you know, I had talked about in previous clips about this gap in here for that, the rail for the uh, fifth wheel. Um, probably what I'm going to do in the meantime is just take a piece of plate steel the same thickness as that and put it on both sides just to uh, hold that out um, there to keep it keep that uh, gap um, the same as it would be with the, the uh, slide rail um, thickness in there so that I can torque them bolts down but anyways there it is all the shavings from the drilling on both sides I'll bring you back this is uh, the u-bolts the old u-bolts off of the frame that they cut off of the cutting torch at the salvage yard the only reason I'm showing you this is everything takes time probably in hindsight I should have cut these or knocked these things out of that uh, suspension bracket long before I got it over and mounted on the frame, but you live and learn. Okay, just a brief clip. What I did is I've got those two pieces of frame rail over here, and um, I'm taking, what I wanted to do is, that is a bracket um, for the pan hard bar. Um, now, I'm not saying that I'm going to be able to find a pan hard bar that will fit um, fit it that bracket, but I want to save it just in case. The other thing that I'm doing is uh, pulling pulling the uh, fifth wheel slider rail off of there um, on both pieces and keeping them just in case that uh, I'm able to use them. Now, when I say that I do, I'm not sure that I will be able to use that pan hard bar, um, let me, I'm going to take you back to the back of the haul truck and just show you something briefly. Okay, so I'm back to the back of the haul truck, and, and there's that bracket. Uh, that bracket goes on the inside of the frame rail. Um, like over there, it would go on the inside of the frame rail. First of all, 
I'm not even sure that it would fit. I, I haven't measured it. But the, the second thing is, is you know, or you can see, this axle that I had gotten to put in here would never had a pan hard bar on it. And how I can tell that is because there's no bracket welded to the top of that casing that would have gone up there. Um, so even if I was to find that, um, let me just do a quick measurement out here. here. So it's approximately seven inches wide and I'm not sure if seven inches will even fit into that thing. Sorry for bouncing around, but kind of hard to do stuff one-handed. Yeah, it might. It is seven inches in there, but um, I, I'm not sure if the seven inches would be uh, perpendicular to or however you want to look at it. It could be parallel or perpendicular to the axle. Um, so it would fit in there to center that up onto the axle. Uh, so it might be a moot point saving it. I, I am going to save it though just in case. Um, you know, I could always, if, if I do end up finding a pan hard bar and can get the bracket adapter that goes to the top of an axle, um, now they're welded on there, so it would have had, have to have been cut off. I might be able to build something that, that, uh, would be flush with that frame on the inside rail, flush with that inside rail uh, to mount that bracket to. But again, it's all speculation and guesswork at this point in time. So, but again, I'm gonna save it just in case I can use it. Okay, I'm over here to the back of the haul truck and let's discuss the air suspension for a couple of minutes. <clears throat> I've been kind of procrastinating doing any work on this because I had lifted the axle up and kind of got the suspension. Let me start from the beginning. I've got the suspension, the front bracket of the air suspension temporarily mounted to the frame. When I say temporarily mounted, it's mounted onto the frame, but those aren't the proper bolts that go through it. And I don't know whether I'm going to back it up on the back side. So let's call it temporarily mounted. I kind of, when I came over here, I took some of the parts and pieces that the guy gave me with the rest of the suspension, and that's for the U-bolts. That's a top plate for the U-bolts. And what I did is set the thing on there, and I, I wasn't really getting the right angle. And so I, I just pulled off of it for a couple of days and kind of thrashed it over in my head. So today, this morning, I came back over here again and I started looking at it and I'm thinking, what, what is going on? What the issue is, I've kind of got the rear axle sat in there in the proper configuration. In other words, the pitch of, of the... Uh, the pitch of the pumpkin is going up slightly towards what will be um, the carrier bearing uh, in the drive shaft. But when I put this bracket, in this bracket, what this bracket does is goes in between the axle and the trailing arm for the rear suspension. And this uh, circular depression in here is for the pin on the back bottom side of the trailing arm on the bottom side there's a pin so that goes in there so if i set that in there and that slot is in the front where the pin and the axle is i get the wrong pitch onto the thing in other words instead of going up slightly it actually would pitch down because this is a tapered wedge arrangement and 
you know, I, I kind of was thrashing it over in my mind for a couple of days thinking, what the hell is going on here? I know that it couldn't, that, that the axles in that semi couldn't have been tapered down. They would never, never be tapered down. Um, the transmission and um, carrier bearing for the drive shaft would always be higher than the rear axle. And I'm thinking, what is going on? I ran into this exact issue on the other axle or the other arrangement that I was having and I was talking about this what it was this pin on this axle is located towards the front the original axle that came off of the truck the pin was located towards the back so what I had issues with was this thing exactly uh, and I had that same issue. Remember, I was uh, had machined out some um, holes to accept the pin and a slot to accept the other pin in the uh, springs. I never occurred to me that I've got the same issue with this stuff, these components. So if I turn this wedge around, it is tapered in the correct position but the slot now is in the back of the axle instead of the front. Uh, so what I have to do is fix that. And you know, I ran into this issue and I ran into this issue fairly recently, but I wasn't using my head and wasn't thinking about what I had ran into with the other things. And I, I was kind of a little baffled by it. But anyways, what I've got to do is just kind of figure out what I'm doing. and. Basically, probably what I'm going to have to do is take this over to the mill and and extend this slot out so that it will accept the pin on the axle. But it just kind of goes to show you that sometimes your head isn't where it should be when you're thinking about these issues. So I've got that bracket over here to the mill. And, and kind of what I'm thinking about doing is doing the same thing that I had to do with the steel <clears throat> when I was originally going to keep the front half of the um, leaf springs in there and, and put sus air suspension, build air suspension off of the back of that um, leaf spring arrangement. What, what I'm probably going to end up doing is taking that slot and milling it out because this this uh, bracket is tapered and the way that it fits with the pin on the axle towards the front, the taper is in the wrong arrangement. So if I turn it around, um, the taper is in the right arrangement, but the slot isn't correct for lining up with the trailing arm of pin on the air suspension so probably what I need to do set this up in the mill and uh, elongate this slot so that uh, it matches a pin on the trailing arm bar for the air suspension so that's kind of where I'm at um, kind of thinking about it I, I've got some stuff that's going on, some hauls that I have to make, so probably and that's, uh, not a lot of it's going to be done on it, the uh, truck in the next week, but um, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, if anybody has any thoughts on something else that I can do with this thing, um, leave a comment. But anyways, there we go, and here goes that camera moving around again. There we go. I'll bring you back the next chapter. Okay, so I thought I was done with this video, but while I was in the process of editing it, I happened to come across a video that somebody posted on YouTube about lengthening a frame on a 379 Peterbilt. And I, I want some um, time to kind of absorb what I saw on that video and uh, before I really make any comments on it, but l let me ex just say that you think that I might go into a lot of detail on this and to get those axles aligned and everything, 
both in extending the frame and uh, installing the air suspension on the back but I really don't think it's a lot to try and accomplish to get those axles so that they're parallel with each other and the truck doesn't track um, and we've all been behind vehicles that track uh, that where the axles are kind of offset from center and it looks like the car is going down the road sideways you actually have to correct the steering the steering is off so that you the wheel is straight and um, but the rear of the vehicle is tracked off <laughs> happens on uh, both cars trucks and you'll see it sometimes on semi trailers where that has happened uh, but before you go believing anything that you see on YouTube, put some thought into it and uh, just double check yourself. Thanks for watching guys. Hit that like button, subscribe.